In this video, we're going to be going over the DAT interface and how to navigate through it on your test day and while you're preparing on our site. The DAT interface looks something like this. It's not the prettiest interface. The buttons don't look the best, but this is where they're going to be positioned and it's always going to be the same. On the actual DAT test, you're going to be answering the questions, which will be here, and you'll be navigating through those questions with the previous and next buttons. You will use the mark button to mark questions that you want to come back to, and the review button to visit the review screen, where you'll be given a summary of the questions on that section of the test. You can see what question you're on in the upper left-hand corner here, and this would be something like question two out of 90, for example. Your name will also be up here in the middle, and your time remaining will be in the top right. Now let's move over to our interface. There, things will be laid out in the exact same way, and they'll function the same. So here's an example of one of our full-length PAT tests. As you can see, we have the question number that you're on in the upper left corner, and your time remaining in the upper right corner, and you can navigate through the questions with the previous and next buttons. So as though I'm going through this test, I'm just answering questions and just keep going. I can select my answers and continue on to the next questions. I can mark any questions that I'm unsure of with the mark button so that I can come back to it later. But I usually try and put down an answer regardless, just in case I don't end up getting back to them in time. And then on my review screen, I can see what I've answered and what I've marked. The review screen has this table, which has all of the items in this far left column, and then you'll be able to see which items are incomplete, which are complete, and which items you've marked. Now, you can navigate from this screen in a few different ways. The first one is that you can double click on the question that you wanna go back to, and that'll bring you back to that question. You can also review all, which will bring you back to the beginning of the test, and you can then navigate from there. You can click on Review Marked, which will bring you back to just questions that you've marked. And you'll be able to navigate just through those marked questions when you press Next. And when you get to the end of those, it will actually send you right back to your review screen. Similarly, you can actually hit Review Skipped. And that will take you back to only the questions that you have not entered an answer for. And again, upon getting through all of your skipped answers, it will send you right back to the review screen. So overall, this is just a really handy way of navigating through the test, and it is also exactly the way that it is on the real DAT. So we recommend playing around with this, getting familiar with all the different functionalities, so you'll be able to utilize them to their highest potential on your actual test. But even if you decide that most of the functionalities of this page aren't really for you, you'll still always be able to use this table to see if there are any problems that you've missed, or if there are any that you've marked and wanna go back to. This is also the page that you'll be sent to when you're finished with your test. And so here is where you'll be able to submit your answers. So definitely check out this page, explore, play around a little bit, and make sure that you're comfortable with all of its functionalities. I wanna point out one thing that you'll see on your real DAT that we have in our full length tests. So when you start a full length test, just like on the real DAT, there are these direction pages that show up at the beginning of each section of the test. For the PAT, for example, you would get one before keyhole problems. And then if you go all the way through the keyhole problems, there is another directions page before top front end problems and so on. So every 15 pages, there's a directions page. And these are just directions for the type of problem that's coming next. And this is also something that you'll see in the survey of natural sciences between biology, chemistry, and organic chemistry. So just remember that they're there. My recommendation is that you not spend too much time on these during your actual test, but instead become really, really familiar with them beforehand on our platform because the directions are not gonna change. So it's better that you know them really well so you don't have to sit here and read them while you're taking your test because the timer on your test will still be running while you're on these directions pages. Next, we're gonna be talking about the cross out feature on the DAT. This feature allows you to cross out answer choices that you want to eliminate. This feature is really helpful on things like angle ranking problems where you have text in the answer choices or reading comprehension where you can really systematically narrow down your answers. 
So let's see how this works. So on the DAT, all you have to do is right click the answer choice in order to cross it out. You can right click on the letter itself of the answer choice or the text of that answer. And it works just the same if there is an image in the answer choice. You can right click directly on the image to cross it out. And then if you need to, you can right click again to uncross out the answer. And crossed out answers turn gray. Even if it's an image, it's gonna turn gray. So it's a really great way to visually tell what answer choices you're eliminating. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to play around and practice with crossing things out and eliminating answers on our interface because that feature is gonna work the exact same way on your real DAT. Now I do wanna say a few things about the reading comprehension interface specifically. It's similar to the other sections of the tests in terms of how you navigate through it. The difference is that you will see your passage before you then navigate through the questions associated with that passage. This will give you a chance to read through the entire passage on the full screen, as well as make any relevant highlights you think are important to prepare yourself to answer the questions that are going to be coming up. To highlight within a passage, you just select the text, and then you'll get this little button that'll pop up. You just click on that and that will highlight the selected text. So you'll be able to highlight smoothly as you're reading through the passage. And then you can see during the associated questions, the passage stays there at the bottom of your screen. And what's special about our interface is that it's actually organized exactly the way that the real DAT interface is organized. We don't have any extra boxes around our questions or boxes around our passages that constrict things. And that's exactly how it's organized on the actual DAT. It just has the question at the top, no boxes, and the passage underneath separated just by this line. Pretty soon we're going to be releasing a bunch of reading comprehension banks, so go ahead and practice with those as well, so you can feel even more prepared for your test. One quick thing to point out is that you will have some specialized buttons in the Survey of Natural Sciences section and the Quantitative Reasoning section. In the Survey of Natural Sciences, you'll have this Exhibit button which you can click to bring up a periodic table of elements. I can't promise that it'll be the clearest periodic table of elements, but it has all of the basic things like the positions of all of the elements, their atomic number, and their mass. Likewise, in the quantitative reasoning section, you will have a calculator button and can do some basic functions with that calculator. Now, let's talk about some of the special features on our interface that help with studying, but will not be present on your actual exam. One special note about timing and just keeping track of time while you're on our platform is if you go to a full length test and you choose timed test, you're gonna have the normal timer that starts at the total time of the test and runs down. So for example, this has 60 minutes for the PAT and it's running down from there. And it's gonna work the same way no matter what kind of problem you're doing. And that's how it's gonna be on your real exam. And so you'll be keeping an eye on that to see how much time you have remaining. Now on our platform, if you start an exam and instead you choose an untimed test, we still wanna be able to show you how much time you're taking on each problem. But since you don't have an overall time limit, instead the timer in this case will be going up and it will reset for each problem that you do. So it's just keeping track of how much time you're taking on each individual problem. And as you can see, instead of saying time remaining, it says time spent. And every time you go to a new problem, you can see it resets to zero. So you can still keep track of how much time you're spending on each problem, even though your overall test is not timed in this case. And we're still gonna give you all of the time data at the end of your test so you can see how much time you spent on each question. And this is also how it works on our question banks as well. If you go to our question banks, our question banks are not timed, but they still have the time spent counting up in the corner here, so you can see how much time you're spending on each question. And again, you'll be able to see that time data on the main page of that question bank. Here it shows your average time per question. And also if you go to the individual results for each assessment, it'll show you the time you spent there as well. And average time per question is also always recorded and displayed on your data pages. 
regardless of if you took a test timed or untimed, or if you're looking at your question banks, the time data will still be displayed on these pages. Another thing you can do on our interface that you cannot do on the real exam is actually check your answers. And we do this so that you have the ability to check your answers while your brain is still engaged in the subject matter, which can be really helpful to ingrain the answers and techniques in your mind as you're going, especially through the question banks. Though it's important to notice that once you've checked an answer, you can no longer change that answer, it's locked in. We always recommend checking your answers as you work through the question banks, but once you're ready to really test yourself and you wanna get the experience of a full exam, you can always go to our full length tests. And when you start your exam, you'll just wanna select timed, and then just don't check your answers as you go, because then that experience will be the closest to the actual DAT. And then when you're done, you can review all of your answers here on this page to check and see what you've missed and what you got right. And then you can go back and review the explanations after your test, just to make sure you understand why you missed the ones that you missed, so you can continue to improve your performance. Good luck studying, and let us know if you have any questions. Find out more at eruditionprep.com and check out our great video tutorials, some of which are available here on YouTube.